Hmm. Brought to you by Grow Generation. Today's episode of the Cantina is whether on Dagobah or Tatooine you are, everything you need to grow right where you are, they have. Later in the episode, more on them you will hear. <laughs> Welcome to a galaxy far, far away. Here at the Cantina Podcast, we provide top shelf service, including rumors, leaks, news, and reviews. Come in, order a Loman Ale, and remember, no droids allowed. Hey guys, well, welcome back to another Cantina, right right here on the Johniver on the Johniverse Podcast Network, wherever you get your podcast from and and on the Johniverse uh YouTube channel. So hit follow, subscribe, all that that good stuff. L LRMonline.com is the web website you should be at every day for all the latest and, and greatest in entertainment news, needs, and opinion opinions, including Star Wars. I I am Kyle Malone dealing with a cold, and I'm joined by the co-pilot of this booze barge, Cam Clark. How's it going, bud? Not too bad. Yourself? Hanging in there, man. I see you're wearing a, a Star Wars shirt. What, what? Just a little T with a, what is it? Storm, uh, first Order Trooper, isn't it? Yeah. Or is that um, just a classic yeah. Storm? Yeah, first First Order Trooper, yeah, actually. Yeah. So I'm you representing know, I, my love of the sequel trilogy. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say the, the Stormtrooper de- design was one of the best parts visually of of that uh of the sequel trilogy as far as like things that they did up upgrade i wasn't some, a big fan was of a lot of the upgrades but there was also just too much of... similarity as well and and you know too much the what was new <laughs> shouldn't have been new and what was just the same should have been different yeah i i did like the storm stormtrooper aesthetic what'd you think of of them yeah, yeah, no problem with that at all. Storm, yeah. Stormtrooper was a stormtrooper, but yeah, it was a nice uh, kind of upgrade. Path, yeah, you know, just, like, yeah, kind of, kind of from even from the clone clone troopers to the o- OT, and from there mm. to the sequels, yeah, they felt that, like a kind of natural yeah. progression. I think they yeah. did some ways in the Star Destroyers as well, but but then to just have the same Tie Fighters, <sighs> the same guns, and you know, the same uniforms for the officers. Well, they, all they did like make that. the two the two seater. Uh, Tie Fighter because it would have it would have been would just have been too a bit difficult if like Finn was having to sit and pose there was lap other and, oh, other oh, ships Finn, though, shippers though. would have liked that yeah <laughs> but but there were other other sh- ships and they they could have they could have had like a uh, Tie Bombers with two c- seats instead of Bombardier and a pilot. I mean that actually would have been quite fun because we've never really seen Tie Bombers too much other than. Yeah, I know, right? But right. shots of them bombing stuff, it would have been kind of cool for to have them in different seats talking to each other and, and, you know, maybe there's a gun at the back of the station that, yeah, you know, Finn could have exactly. got on and stuff like that. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, any, anyway, ways. Uh, we're, 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 we're here to talk we're a bit about uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, again, go go Funny. figure. It's coming up next, next month and... Uh, Excuse me. One of the first things to kind of talk about is the uh, rumored trailer. Now, this is something that I was gonna uh, bring up before I even saw saw this piece yeah. this this week was the idea of well, when will we see like a, a TV spot or or something yeah. from Kenobi? Um, tell us about what this uh, r- rumor is Absolutely. and where, I mean, where it came I think from. We all expect to, to see. It was called a teaser trailer, what we saw before. So we all Mm -hmm. expect to see a full trailer sometime before the series. Before I'd read this, my guess would have been May the 4th, because that's only a couple of weeks away, and it just kind of makes sense um, that they would want to cover it at that point. However, (coughs) MSW, who, let's face it, I've got good good sources around Obi-Wan Kenobi, especially a lot of story details that we've talked about before. Um... And they're saying actually what they've heard is it could be even quicker than that. They're they're hearing that there, there's new footage in the way, possibly imminently within the next week, um, which I kind of find odd. I have to admit because it kind of feels like why would you do it a week before May the fourth when you could just go well let's wait a week and just drop it on Star Wars Day. Um, yeah. But you know, hey, I mean, as I said, they they do have good sources and. Um, to get a lot of things right so i guess we just have to watch this space what i would always say 
with them. Um, I mean, they don't ever say trailer, but why would we get new footage if we didn't have um, a trailer kind of thing is, yeah. is my thought process on that. Um, what I would always say, and, and why we don't really cover you know, trailer dates that much, is we all know they can change it right to the last day. Button. You know, someone at Lucasfilm could literally go, oh yeah, those guys at MSW think they're smart, do they? Next Delay. day. You know, and or just day, wait, day before. Wait. Wait, well, <laughs> but this, wait, this case, they're calling within a week. Actually, so, so, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's absolutely possible. Or, you know, they could just go bugger them. They're not getting anything in May the 4th either and not give us a trailer till the week before it. But I can't see that happening because surely you want to build some sort of hype. And, you know, a little bit. Look, as film as marketing needs to go more and what marketing's supposed to do instead of trying to not give the game away which yeah. which has never really seemed to be an issue in Obi-Wan Kenobi anyway they've been pretty a lot more open about that than they are with the Mandalorian stuff so fingers yeah. crossed we may get a little bit more Obi-Wan um, and the article from SW does kind of hint that maybe we might see something with Vader and Obi-Wan you know which would be the hype shot um, you know whether it's a moment from one of the two conflicts that we we've talked about before um and it, i mean i don't know but th- that that's that's the, how you hype a series you know yeah. show the show of or uh, the two of them just you don't even need to show them fighting as we've talked before you just have to have mm-hmm. them phew, ignite the lightsabers and walk towards each other and cut away to something else and that's hype enough for, for people you know in some way i've i've been w- wondering if we would see any anything of of uh hayden or vader and then they released the one still still frame image i don't remember was that empire pyre or anyway it's someone mm. there was one still yeah, frame yeah. uh no, released uh, no, a couple EW, weeks ago EW, EW, EW. um and they, um, they've, they've been doing all the coverage for this and yeah there's only been one shot so far yep. vader. Fully i gonna i i yeah. don't think i don't think we would i th- think they would hold the image of Hayden over a, an image or or a video of of Vader. So I think if if we do see anything related to to Anakin or Vader, it'll be a suit sh- shot. It won't mm-hmm. be uh, a back to tank sh- shot or a an alleged uh, flashback. Back. We are no, under the I, impression I of guessing yeah. that that there will be flash no, flashbacks. Well, I think we'll, we'll have him. That there'll be flashbacks as well. We're trying to play po- politics, man. man. You know, but um, <laughs> you know, I think you just have to. You know, we've we've yeah. heard that for quite some time. Um, mm-hmm. other, it makes, makes other sense. Other makers have heard the same thing. Yep. We just don't know the context of where they come in and how it works. I have no idea. But um, I could see but, them show, showing him in yeah. in suit, like you said, kind of yeah, stepping forward, igniting a, the, a lightsaber. A flashback would be like a whoa, you know. Yeah, we're going to see clone that, clone you know, trooper armor. Um, Kenobi. So stuff. I think yeah. that's best left for a surprise reveal on the show rather exactly. than rather than yeah, a tease. Whereas we all know Vader's in it. We know he's in the suit. So mm-hmm. you know, it's not that much of a tease and it's still the kind of money shot of what everyone's looking for at the same time. The only thing I could uh potentially see of of them doing doing in any type of marketing with, with Hayden would be his eyes opening whether that's in in the tank we've heard r- yeah. rumors that that's the stinger at There's the end of episode two, episode 2 or or it's a scene scene where the helmet's off, off for one reason or or the other and we see the the uh eyes are are op- just a flash but i think they want to they want to hold they want to hold hayden's visage to to the lat to the I, last i think moment. they'll hold it back and then they'll market the shit out of them <laughs> the, week, the week after he appears, you know, yeah. and then they'll have him doing the, the press tours at that point and talking about what was it like to be back playing Anakin Skywalker again, even in a flashback. Oh, it was great, you know, blah, 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 blah. I think that's that's the kind of thing I would expect to happen. Yeah, that's how that's how I'm feel, feeling about it. It's it's kind of weird, like you, you had mentioned about uh, um, marketing and how Star Wars has been, been – Hell, how Mar- Marvel's been. Look how long it took them to release the uh, 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 Thor Thor trailer. Um, yeah, it was the closest time between yeah, the I know, Marvel right, project right? and a trailer. Um, and, and it's weird, though, that despite the la- lack of official press, 
there's still a lot of crap that is known about the this Obi Wan uh, Kenobi show. Too um, much for me, but yeah, that's how these things go, you know. And... We'll we'll see how that that goes. But uh, speaking of uh, PR and and doing the the rounds to chit chat about Kenobi, uh, McGregor and Christensen got to sit down with EW and and talk a bit about. Yeah. Uh, uh, their prep work. Um, I'm bringing that over to the screen. You wrote this one too, right? Or did Shocky write? No, you you wrote no, it. Right. Uh, yeah. You you want to read it, read it off some? <laughs> I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the crux of it is that you know, without reading out the whole quote, you can, if you're on YouTube, <laughs> you can see them. If you're you know, yeah. if you're listening to this and you want me to read out quotes all day, that, that's <laughs> kind that's kind of kinky. Different I don't pay. know if that's the, the pod. This is the podcast for you, you know, but. Um, Basically, cut a long story <laughs> short, um, McGregor said he prepped by watching all nine. Soon, by saying all nine, he means the main Skywalker saga stories. Mm-hmm. Rogue One didn't didn't m- make it for him, but um, all nine Star Wars movies. Uh, just to get back into that world, as he said, I love how it was you Forgot Solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it was interesting to watch a film because I'd seen I hadn't seen them since they come out. He says, um, which is kind of given the negativity that came out around about those films um, and I think he was kind of negative about them himself in many ways at that, at that point as well um, and I think he was all that in love with Star Wars when he finished making the prequels mm-hmm. but um, I can totally see why he's not watched them since then and, and you know uh, it's cool to go back to that whereas Hayden Christensen went for one further, so he he kind of one up him as Anakin would do to Obi Wan, and um, he said that um, he watched all the films, but he also went back and watched some of them. I didn't say he watched them all, but got back into some of the animated shows, the Clone Wars and Rebels, and given the character that he's playing as opposed to Obi Wan, I think um, it's kind of more important for him to do that because there's a hell of a lot of Anakin story that he really wasn't a part of was he yeah. um because so much of it you know the relationship between him and ahsoka and we know he's in ahsoka um yep. god that's, you know, really, that scares me uh, just there's nothing to do with hayden christensen whatsoever um and then you know there's a lot of stuff with that character and and the inquisitors etc that's all in rebels and that's the kind of timeline that we're jumping into here so being that that's all kind of canon now, he kind of I can get why he needs to get his head around the character a little bit more rounded of um, of what he is rather than the way he played him, <coughs> especially if he wants to do things better, which I'm sure so so does you and McGregor, uh, and I'm I'm sure they'll be a lot happier with the script this time around. Fingers crossed, because <laughs> if they get it wrong again, then. What a waste, um, you know. Yeah. So we absolutely hope that the script is really, really good for us. I I agree. agree. The uh, the biggest thing it's 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 good to hear him mention the cartoons, have having seen them. Um, simply for for what you had you had said, the the major the majority of what people think of when they hear Anakin and and Obi Wan doesn't it doesn't come from the prequels <laughs> I, no. I i really need no, I mean, people to understand it, we're not knocking you for, for liking them as a middle-aged master you know not even middle-aged maybe by that point and a, a young sort of pre pre-adult anakin if you like um and it's very much master and apprentice and then suddenly we see them again at the start of revenge of the sith and it's like laughy jokey and you know and you mm-hmm. can tell uh, by this point anakin's already a jedi knight you know obi-wan's now in the council there's talk about whether you know anakin can go in the council or not things have evolved and it's three years of you know warfare across the entire galaxy that these guys have been involved in but that story is, is, as you say, is only told in in the animation side, um, and they do have a better relationship. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily that I love the voices compared to the original voices or anything like that. That's personal preference, but um, but ultimately they they do have a more evolved and, and detailed relationship in that show than they ever do in the movies. Yeah, and and it, it's one of those things that I'm con constantly trying to point out to to people that 
we any anyone that wants to try to say that the the dialogue and the and the writing in the prequels is is as close to objectively good good as you can get with a, opinions you're you're deluding yourself awful but you it's, can't I mean, it's can't no one can the dialogue it's the way it's shot as well that too, you know too. there's like but, cuts that are wrong and things oh, like yeah. that as well but not even movies. not even just just that the actual projection of the clone wars actors <laughs> onto <laughs> the uh specifically especially hey hayden i mean look look I watched Jumper. That's not a Star Star Wars movie. I like the idea for Jump Jumper. Hayden Christensen was still not not a good actor, even in that that movie. Even though it was kind of a fun fun movie when I first saw it. Fun movie, but, but it's he wasn't good, great. It's one of those movies. It's got a great concept, but actually yeah, it's not poor, a good poor execution. Film, you know, and yeah. and unfortunately, that's also what the prequels were. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he wasn't working with with people who. We're giving him material to work with, so I'll give him, I'll give him a bit of benefit of the doubt. Plus, he's not going to be the main guy in this. Yeah. Most of the time, Vader's going to be in the suit, so it's it's going to be more little moments, which I'm sure they can get right. And uh, ultimately, it's the main focus is going to be on McGregor's Obi Wan himself. It's his show. Ultimately, it's not called Anakin Skywalker. Or I Darth know, Vader. right? It's, right. You know, um, they're so they're so such a ray a razor thin line to walk with with this show you and i've discussed mm, many times yeah. and and having too much hayden could really ru- ruin that and i don't mean because of his a- acting or anything i mean be- because then you you start having to explain too too much and try to fit fit too much into the uh yeah, into that's, the that's uh, like flashbacks work if it's if it's exactly so be one recalling moments yep. you know um and his depression and guilt over what happened. I actually, do you know one thing I was thinking about the other day there? And I don't that? think we ever really considered this because of the way it's fit together. But just with some of the comments I've heard, I think Obi-Wan's going to start this show believing that Anakin is dead. Hmm. I think he is going to think that he left Anakin for dead there on Mustafa. Uh, but the Emperor's still around, still powerful, and, you know, they ten can't year, really... Ten get years back. later, I mean, Vader was well, pretty if active stuck in, in the Tatooine, galaxy. Tatooine, how would they have heard that Darth Vader? I mean, Vader was nowhere near Tatooine, so... The Imper- you know, Imperials had, had had to have gotten... He wasn't a public uh, figure, Darth Vader, was he? He wasn't, you know... He was pretty, he was pretty, pretty public. Says, read, you know, read the... Uh, when you read the uh, comic comic books, which are can- canon, um, he was doing a, a lot all over. <laughs> the canon it's, until it, someone but I, they, they break I, I, Well, the, can, uh, the canon's whatever it needs to be, Cam. Needs to be. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but I, I could see it p- potentially. I never saw it that way in the films. That's all I can say. I like it. I the know. films, I never saw. I saw Vader as being, you know, Palpatine is the figurehead, you know, and he's got a million people in official positions doing things from Vader's a guy he sends to get things done. So the, those that are in the Empire absolutely know who Vader is, but you can't see them saying like, oh, hello, uh, yeah, it's Vader. Uh, I can't make the meeting tonight. Could you uh, <laughs> go and do this presentation for me, please? Well, I mean... And Vader turns up, you know, and says, uh, hello, everyone. And <clears throat> this is where <coughs> where the writing writing and, and how some people are like, oh, well, o- Obi-Wan's a... a uh, I'm not going to get into all, all of it. Obi-Wan's a, a liar in episode four. No, he tells he tells what he needs to tell. He just knows a lot of legalese. Uh, I wouldn't call call him an, out, an outright liar, but uh, people use... Uh, c- could, you, could you spin him... At telling Luke the story of you know Vader betrayed and murdered your father, as only in in that moment on uh, on Coruscant and and into uh, Mustafar. I don't know. It's it's possible possible, but I I don't I don't know if I would buy o- Obi Wan not not knowing he was uh, he was alive. But then if this show is filling in the yeah gap, i got it yeah it I, alive and it brings it that's all what i'm back saying it it all it all worse than i thought it was you know it all fit fits oddly 
it all is being uh, it's potentially it's trying it's to fit oddly it's into it's that exactly. reason why it's mm-hmm. difficult. Yeah, so we we'll, we'll see what wait and see. We'll see what what happens, but um, let's go ahead and take a quick word from our sponsors. We're going to keep this episode a little bit uh, quick, not feeling so hot. So yeah, uh, I got to get the ad up. There we go. Code Generation, where the pros go to grow. Grow Generation offers the best deals and discounts on the best grow products on the market. Grow Generation serves customers across the nation and carries a wide inventory of renowned cultivation brands. Go to www.growgeneration.com where the pros go to grow. I'll have to get the Neeson story back up. I accidentally closed it. Thank you, uh, Grow Generation, for uh, sponsoring the episode. Cam, while I am looking for Mr. Mm-hmm. Liam Neeson's ar- article, <laughs> uh, why don't you frame the, the scene first? Tell us what we, we've right. heard before, so, and then I'll bring up what Neeson has, I has said the point. recently. I, was, I thought you were going to say, you know, while I'm doing this, like, serenade every day we have so long, <laughs> tell, them a, tell them a dirty limerick or something. Like uh, the guy from uh, uh, Wheel of Time, uh, Tom. Yeah, the 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 uh, uh, Tom Merlin, the the yeah. the um, the Gleeman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Anyways, go ahead. So, I mean, I guess if we go right back to the start, Liam Neeson's always kind of said he wasn't in Obi Wan Kenobi when it was first kind of muted that you know it was coming before it started filming everything like that. But of course, what we heard through the grapevine, and this did come. I would say mostly from MSW, uh, who were quite detailed in what they said about this. Um, it gave Qui-Gon Jinn a fairly decent-sized role within Obi-Wan Kenobi, and they claim that Liam Neeson is back and that he appears... I'm not going to say too much more. I'm not, I don't want to get like too spoilery. Uh, and yeah. this, what I would say is that there's two things. There is both a voice performance from Neeson and also an actual physical appearance as well and I'll leave it at that according to MSW Um, and given what else we've got right that we've saw that and it all starts to match up with the other things we're seeing I I find it hard to think they got that completely wrong that would be my opinion however recently um, Neeson chatted with comicbook.com and of course they he wasn't chatting about Star Wars, but they had to ask him, you know. And this is probably a fishing question, 100%. Like, what, what would it take for you to come back to Star Wars? In other words, are you in Obi-Wan Kenobi? But asked if he would return to Star Wars, Neeson actually said, oh, I think so, yeah, 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 I think so. If it was a film. Yeah, I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to TV, I must admit. I just like mm-hmm. the big screen, you know. Um... Right, there's a couple of points I'll make in this. This was two days after I had just watched Liam Neeson <laughs> appear in a TV show in the UK. <laughs> you know, so was he too much of a snob to appear in Dairy Girls, which is the brand new season? He was in the first episode as a guest star. He was playing a, like a, oh, I forget what you called them, but the police over in Northern Ireland. Mm. You know, it's all set in the, you know. Yeah, d- during the Troubles or right after. During the right Troubles, after. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um and you know, so obviously I know my I know my heritage is character. fucking history. History. <laughs> um, and he, he's also in another article, and I, I can't remember the name, sorry, because I didn't know this, but I read it in someone else's coverage of it, and Ned said he also appeared in an episode of da, 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 or whatever it was. So he, you know, he has done TV before, quite recently. So to say that you know he's. T- he's too much of a snob for TV and then appear in basically a network TV show um, but he's too good for a streaming show I just don't buy it to me it just sounds like he knows he's in it and he's trying to not say that he's in it basically because that would give the game away what's he going to turn around and say yeah I would come back uh, so I think he's kind of like yeah I would come back and but, but, but like, not to TV you know because I'm yeah. not an obi uh, I would come back for a film I mean, how could he come back for a film? You know, there's there's no way really... I mean, as a force ghost, yes, I guess he could come back in any film in the future, but, you know, I think the moment for that was... has gone and... Yeah. You know, gone away now. I, I mean, why would Qui-Gon appear to Ray? It's, all, it's you know, 20, many years later years or something like that. Hey, Ray. Uh, yeah, and it's almost you, 20... Man? I'm, I'm Qui-Gon. <laughs> I'm Qui-Gon. I'm Qui-Gon. I, I trained Obi-Wan. 
I'm Ray Skywalker. Shut, shut the, shut up. Um, <laughs> and it's been 23 three years since Phantom Men Menace almost. So it's he's he's getting up there in age. You're not gonna yeah, which you, see him you, come back you, to be I mean, Master be Qui Gon again with the yeah. Force Ghost look. Woo, you know it'll make him look a bit younger. I'm sure, but um, I think you know. He's one of those guys, and he's, he doesn't, you know, he ages slowly. Oh, he you know, still looks, he, looks good. He doesn't look his age. He doesn't look his age. Yeah, 100%. Age. Um, you know, he's still <laughs> starring in action films, and he's what? He must mm -hmm. be in his 60s now. He must be in his 60s, Yeah, got, gotta be. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't quite buy it. That's the thing. So that's what he says. He would come back, but 69. only in a film. I just don't nice. buy it. I think he's trying to throw us off the, the track a little bit and I uh, based on that I do trust the MSW do have good information so a lot of the stuff that says maybe stuff we've heard but not published as well you know because we thought it was too much and um, yeah I, I just can't see them getting this one majorly that, wrong and I've heard it elsewhere but with less detail from some other yeah. makers as well that and just the simple fact that act, actors are paid to yeah. lie to you yeah, no, yeah knowingly you know so it's nothing for for them to lie look it's at like look at andrew, andrew garfield. garfield yeah, yeah. Like, so, <laughs> what i hated he hated hated when fans got angry at him for that i hate you know so if you're one of our readers who did get angry at that sorry i'm slagging you off we still hate bit, we still hate you still read you still don't like comments on <laughs> please still come and say but yeah i don't get it because what is what is the alternative you know it's, in that situation, it's up to Sony. Sony say, and he, he actually said, "Look, like, I'm getting asked about this. What, what's going on here, guys?" And they told him, "Oh no, we'll get that under control." Uh, just mm -hmm. lie. You know, that's what he was control. told to do. Yeah. He's under an NDA, so you know, all right, they maybe can't sack him from the film or something if he breaks it. But they, there may be some financial penalty there. Would you? Would you? Yeah. yeah. Just say, hey, I'm not going to lie for these guys just to break a potential financial penalty or maybe not get a Spider-Man gig, you know, to keep going <laughs> further if that's his <laughs> ambition as well. I mean, and so we, we can't expect Liam Neeson to do it either. You know, it's just yeah. one of those things. Actors, when they're trying to keep information secret, actors are going to lie to you and they're going to keep lying to you for many, many years to come. And that's the <laughs> only way they can preserve certain secret appearances. Yeah. Just don't buy this one. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on on that, and every everyone that would get angry at at them for for lying. I I mean, look, ev even we try our our hardest to protect you you the readers and and listeners from at least ac accidentally be being spoiled. Um, Done it before. Why, and I've had to yeah. change things. Um, and up, and we yeah. always provide the full story where we're like, hey, we're withholding X amount of in info, but you can, if you want, you can cl click here and and go see uh, the the rest for for yourself. Yeah. But I mean, you can't you can't get angry at the at the guy for trying to pres preserve the su the surprise. No, Allegedly, it's what he's told to do. It's his job, you know. Exactly. If you got a job and they say, hey, so like part of the job is like you're working for the CIA now, you can't tell anybody you're working for the CIA. What are you got to do? Oh, fuck that, man. I'm, I'm going to tell people. <laughs> just going to, so I just got a job for the CIA and walk into the <sighs> coffee shop next door. You know, you wouldn't do it because you're like, okay, that's part of my job. You've agreed to it yeah. before you took the job. That's what an NDA is, guys. Yep. Yep. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll leave that that one there yeah. um couple quick fi fire stories uh one last one about o obi-wan then just a couple things i wanted to hear your your opinion <laughs> on mm. uh rupert friend teasing some cameos and stuff now one of the one of the scary th things about obi-wan K kenobi is that Ray razor thin uh placement for for story um but there's always this potential for <laughs> other things to either come in <laughs> touch it and then to disappear because they they happen at the same same time, or setting th things up for someone to go go into hiding for X amount of years and and show up in mm -hmm. some movie or mm. TV you know streaming pro project I mean, later. A big <sighs> example of this is because we quite like Rogue One, but when mm -hmm. um, what's off? I can't remember the the characters' names when Doctor Devan and what's his name show up and walk by. Mm -hmm. That that wasn't needed. That was that was a step too much. You know, what I yeah. mean, that was too much. That was why I would agree. they be there? We don't need that. You know, not um, not at all. They they need to be else elsewhere running 
earning their death sentence in one of the other other sy- yeah. systems. Not that, not that one. Anyway, so Rupert Friend was talking about some some cameos and and Easter eggs, which I I think are dangerous here, but but could potentially be fine. Um, yeah. I was so, basically just hyping the show, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, you know, and saying it's going to be great. It's going to be thrilling. There's thrilling. It's a, the most thrilling addition to the Star Wars canon like ever. He basically said, Ewan McGregor's doing great things with that role. It's a dream for fans of the original film. We can't obviously have Alec Guinness back, but Ewan was born to play the role. I obviously can't tell you, but cameos from people, Easter eggs galore. It's a thrilling ride, is basically what he said. So, yeah. Who is a a, a potential cameo that hasn't, that hasn't been, or at least we haven't gotten good good word on? Baris Ophi. Okay. Potentially, I think, could be one we might see. You know, we haven't heard what the end of her tale is. There was always a lot of fan rumours that she would become an Inquisitor because she was kind of in prison in the Jedi Temple at the time of Order 66. It might make sense that somebody kind of went, hey, you were a bad guy. What, he's still big bad guy or something yeah. like that? Um, so she could show up and be one of the Inquisitors, maybe one of the ones we haven't seen the face of. There was one rumour I heard about that, but it was from someone that doesn't really do a lot yeah. of Star Wars rumours, and it was a long time before the show started to film, so you were like, okay, I, I'm not so sure about this, but, you know, who knows, maybe they were right. Um, yeah, I, we'll wait uh, and see, but what obvious ones I can think of. I can't really think think of any anyone unless it was going to be some... Something connected to to Andor is the only thing I could well, come up w- with. Rupert Finn could be talking about Jimmy Smith, who we reckon's in it. He could be talking mm-hmm. about the young Leia Organa, who's in it, you know, but not yeah. seen in the trailer. He, this is the, what he could be talking about in terms of cameos, because from his point of view, we don't know that yet, um, even though we do kind of know that. Yeah. Um, so it, it could be that we actually know a lot of the cameos that are going to show up already. Oh yeah, I'm fi- I'm figuring he's he's probably talk talking about the thing. But I just was cu- curious about who else uh, who else might be in in your mind. Um, what's yeah, the worst I, I think cameo? The, what's the worst the person worst? that could show up that would piss you off the most? Well, there there's one that I I have a feeling is gonna gonna be on there because I I saw Not something necessarily on, online, but have a bad feeling. Uh, but, you the freaking. Yeah. Uh, okay, diner cool. owner from the diner guy from uh, uh, oh, from Attack of the Clones. Yeah, from Attack of the Clones. I don't give. A, I'm sorry, guys. I don't. Yeah, I don't care care about the the oh, stuff on are. course. It's it's awful in my, in my my in my mind. But I know a lot of pe- people dig it and good. For them. I thought he was a not bad character, and he was played quite well for a for a digital it just, character. It, in that it was film. just a waste, but of it was time. all short, and weird, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think McGregor struggled with it, but but anyway, that, yeah, yeah, that that would be just oh annoying. But I think the worst one for me would be that somehow Mace Windu shows up and gets involved because I'm yeah. not necessarily against yeah. Mace Windu returning, but. That would be the wrong place for that to happen. But there have been no rumors. Yeah, that, that would I mean, be way, way worse. I really, you know, considering Samuel Jackson was kind of already starting making Marvel stuff at that point, pretty busy with that. A, He's not in it, but you know. What about a surprise? Me off. A surprise from the uh, from the guy in the uh, Fallen Jedi Fallen Order game. I haven't played that Cause game because it's there's not the, my uh, kind of game. Inquisitors and stuff, so. But it's canon, and is yeah, he alive? so that's what I'm saying. Does he die? Uh, no, yeah, he's alive. If, if I he gets if his I ass remember. kicked by Vader, I think at the end, doesn't he? Have you played the game to completion? No, you finished it. No, no, no. Either about it's my just for has, it's uh, Force uh, Unleashed plus plus uh, plus um, Dark Souls stuff. More no more like uh, uh, Titanfall with the mechanics. It's yeah. it's Titan, uh, so Titanfall yeah. mechanics with with uh, Force but Unleashed. With Dark Souls style gameplay. bosses that you need to yeah, you kind of got to be grind, way, but it's way like easy, that. way easier, way way well, way easier. Well, apparently it's quite hard if you turn the difficulty away oh. up on it. Whereas no, Dark Souls no one, one difficulty is in most, it. Most people know, don't do that. Thing. Yeah, but uh, I like playing on normal or, or game, hard, but not yeah. kind of game, even though it's Star Wars. Um, 
Yeah. Speaking of games, the last couple of quick things, Ooh. just an, an opinion from, from you. Uh, Sky Skydance uh, New Media announced that they'll be working on a new game. This is not anything thing that's been announced before, so it's not like they're t- taking over Eclipse. Um, no. What What do you think? But what I've heard of, in the grapevine is that it's the, the person involved with it, it's a resumption of a game that she was involved with that got cancelled previously. That's that's the was kind that of that 1066 or 1066? 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, um, when, when which you, most you, Americans you, won't know, but we learn that in primary school. Oh, we, I learned. I learned that in elementary, by the Normans, elementary school. School. William the Conqueror been, coming o- coming on yeah, over. I guess it's your history. William the Bastard. Well, you know, um, ultimately, but um, yeah. So I mean, the official announcement is just that you know, Skydance New Media announced a collaboration with Lucasfilm Games because they're going to develop, produce. Um, a narrative-driven action-adventure game featuring an original story in the Star Wars galaxy. Um, this is helming it as award-winning writer and director Amy Hennig, a game industry legend whose credits include the blockbuster series Legacy of Kane, Jack and Baxter Uncharted. Hennig was involved with 1313, allegedly, or something like that at the time. So one wonders if there's a resumption of of what that game was supposed to be, which was never fully realized, is is coming back for a new generation kind of thing. Now, there Based there on was what story details leaked about that as well. It, what which one? That wasn't the bounty bounty hunter one, was no. it? Yeah, it okay. was about the chorus and it was about underworld, but starring uh, different characters. It wasn't about Boba Fett. Yeah. Yeah, I I could character. see that that because I I know a lot a lot of. A lot of people were excited about 1313. Um, I didn't really get too much, you know, I can't, I, that or I can't rem- remember, excuse me, remember it, but I do remember the buzz about, about it and people being excited. So I could, I could easily see that. Um, she's not one to, to be working on any new, new flight sim, space combat sim. So I, I don't see, no, I don't foresee I don't that. 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 No. She's also not a, a t- type for a, um, uh, I mean, Uncharted is is under her her belt, you know. So yeah, yeah. she's not she's not a first person first person shooter <laughs> type, right? So you start lo- game, you know. You start looking at thing, things like that third third per third person First-act action adventure, adventure yeah. action R- RPG. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm I'm down to see what what happens if they if they you know read. And it could just be Uncharted in this Sky Wars. Star Wars universe. You know, I I actually Sky thought Wars. I actually thought of, thought about that to to a degree. What would what would you say to playing the um the uh like Talon card or Marex Ter- Teric role the 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 underworld you know goods broker the person hunting down artifacts and art rare goods and and things like I mean, that it for like a for good the trade story, but. Yeah, getting caught up in the underworld. This is my my issue with the Uncharted games. Now, my son does have a PlayStation, but we've, you know, I've been mostly Xbox over the last Mm -hmm. few years. But I have watched a bit of, you know, Uncharted to see what the first was about. It's it's not really my kind of game. It's like Mm -hmm. a game I would be happy just to watch somebody play on YouTube almost because it's a story-based game. And and I like story-based games, don't get me wrong, but I just don't find, like, it's just set piece to set piece that you know, and it's designed with quick time that you have to do this and that, and it's just it's not my kind of game. The gameplay doesn't excite me. So what I would worry about with this game is, from what I heard about thirteen thirteen, there was all these cool story details and characters and what they were supposed to be up to, but you know, never saw any gameplay of it. I couldn't think of the story and well, what the, how does this work in gameplay? What's the hook? well? Yeah, I mean. Which in, in my in my mind, you you have you know the char- character and depends on which era, era you set it up on set it up on. I, I figured they'd eventually cross a dark Jedi or dark Force user, bad bad Force user, you know fuck you know screwing around with some some artifact. But there was always this this idea in in my mind for not not necessarily a Star Wars game, but I want to apply it here. Um, take the action adventure part, but add on some, some of those like, um, 
business things that you get in in Grand Theft Auto. So imagine if you are the the Talon card, the booster T Tarek or Mirex is his daughter Kor Koran's wife, um, where you're doing the action adventure st stuff, but you also go to your your ship and you run your underground business. You're mm. tra doing some of the tr trading, sending out. You know, hey, you go p play nice with with the uh, uh, Crimson Dawn it, folks it and like stuff a great like idea, that. But you wonder I don't think whether do. you could do that with a, a proper galaxy, you I know? Mean, because when you jump uh, to another planet and you load, it's like it'd be more like Destiny, where you need to have different mm -hmm. game worlds that you can jump to, you know? And yeah, memory heavy, and to do that where it's do, almost do open it. world, I just I'm not sure they could uh, pull that off. I mean, yet. you could. You could do some some tri tricks, but it wouldn't it wouldn't have it wouldn't need need to be as uh in in depth as like a business sim. Like I said, think kind of like a a slightly more 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 involved uh, uh Grand Theft Auto businesses. You know, where yeah, you get I mean, the I'm properties and do. You just need to make yeah. more Star Wars games, and just because I, you know I'm very fussy when it comes to gaming, it's probably because mm -hmm. I'm getting older. I don't know. Me you too. Know, just, Me too. I, I can't handle difficult games anymore. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> just like. Oh, uh, I still like or online games. fighting against other people games. I kind of just get like you know, and people send you messages and that, and I'm like, dude, I'm like 43. I don't really care about what your KD is, man. You know, I'm, I really just don't care, and it just kind of yeah. pushes you away for that side of things. But I still love, love gaming, so you know, if they could just do something that works for me, great. But they, ultimately, I'm not your target audience, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, something like what. You know the fans seem to be really happy with the things they were hearing about a 13 13 type game so so by all means go for it produce different star wars games and you know make the you make some use out of the franchise finally there's only so much you can do with first person and third third person jedi yeah. games it's time to do a little little something a little something and flight different. sim games you know yeah you know uh that. i would love a new R RTS, but that's that's the PC gaming geek in me. Um, you know, last quick thing I just want to touch on because because it's near and dear dear to my my mm. heart. The Star Wars EU, uh, the Essential Legends collection, uh, has been uh, growing over the pa past year with the uh, uh, formerly X Wing, now Rogue Squadron books. Hopefully, that means Aaron Al Alston's. Uh, um, Race Squadron books will get uh, this treatment as well, but the next books were were announced. Uh, book three for for Rogue Squad Squadron, the Kratos tra Trap Trap, um, by Max my, Mac Mike Stack Mike Stackpole, uh, Darth Maul Shadow Hunter and Death Troopers. And two reasons why I wanted to just mention you know it one Rogue Squadron yay, two Death tro Troopers is a zombie horror. Star Wars. Oh right, novel. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, I. I so I've never come across that one before. It's fine. It's fine, and the way they they do it with a virus and and stuff like like that, you're like, yeah, I can I can buy it. Fuck, you know, we got force force users and and stuff. Um, that can make like force zombies to to a degree. So, but it just it reminded me of our conversation la last week about potentially seeing star wars do uh horror. uh horror horror you know show or movie why why not if you could do it in a in a no novel and and like i said if you're playing off of like dark dark side rituals and and really play playing into what what we see as like occult occultism here on on earth and in, in reality I don't. I don't know, man. What, what do you think? So you didn't even know know this book exi no. existed? No, I'd never heard oh. of it. You know, what, how, what do you think about it? it? Is it one of the more recent uh, EU books? So, yeah, it, it was. Uh, Death you know, I think it must troopers. have been after I had given up in the, the EU books by that point that it came out. I said 2009. I knew of Darth Maul Shadowhunter, but I had yeah. stopped reading the yeah. EU books by then, and I wasn't too interested in. The story of Darth Maul. Mm -hmm. I liked what they did with him in the Clone Wars and Rebels, but I wasn't too interested outside of that and his story, yeah. to be honest, because I wasn't loving the prequels. But you know, no, I've read the Kratos trap. So yep. I can't remember anything about it, but I, I've, I have <laughs> read so, it 100 because I read all the yeah. books. It's the one with uh, the. It's the one after they've taken Coruscant from Isard, mm. and she releases releases that uh that uh alien non human virus. Admiral 
uh, that's a uh, uh, Isani. Isani. No, Isani no. Uh, Iceard, uh, Iceheart. She she took over way before da Dala did. Right. Okay. Yeah. Da Dala was in a long in the mall. Time. I was a teenager yeah. when I was reading these. So. I know, man, man. Like ninety three, I think was the publishing year for for the first first one. So, I I do know that both Shadow Hunt Shadow Hunter and uh, Kratos Tra Trap are getting unabridged uh, audio books. Um, the guy Mark Tom Mark Thompson that that does the uh, audio books for Star Wars when it's fully unabridged, it's ama amazing, great audio quality sound effect. Sound effects, music, like the the whole yeah. the whole nine. I really, really, oh, really en enjoy them. That? Oh yeah, um, oh, oh yeah. R two uh, units, narrating? blasters. Oh, no, no, he's he's reading, re reading. Like he uh, enunciates, does different different voice different voices for all the all I mean, the characters. I, I like somebody that does different voices. That yes. given for me, to they do. Uh, like he, that. It's pretty good. Uh, but to actually have sound effects as well is, mm -hmm. is not usual, though. You wouldn't and normally background, get that. Background yeah, mu music. Even background that, noise, like when they're in the cockpit of an X-Wing, you have the engine whine go going on in the back of, of the uh, the reed. So I, I if, if you guys have, have read X-Wing yeah, before, right. why not give it a give it a try? I, I think... I think almost everybody gets like one free audio book for. I'm for sure, yeah. I keep Amazon, you know, so yeah. <laughs> keep. I'll, I'll save mine for, for some point, but I'll, I don't particularly. I prefer reading, so. So do I. I guess so I do I. Use it in some like this a, where it's a different experience. Yeah, it's exactly why I I try, tried it because the these were books I'd already read mul multiple times. It's kind of like how how could I experience it uh, a bit differently. Anyways. I've been kind of taking a break from reading just now because I read so much last year. But uh, yeah, you you did oh, all the Will that. of Time last year or Sanderson Wheel of, Wheel of Time. All no, I did all Wheel of Time, all fourteen books in under a year. Yeah, and really it was it was more like six months because I took a big gap on book ten because <laughs> it was a bit boring, and then oh. smashed through the the last five in like a week. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so been taking a slight anyway. Break. Anyway, I don't, <laughs> well, want to, don't care about that. They want to know about Star Wars. No, and they, that's they, the end of the show. It's the end of the show, guys. Uh, check out l l r m online dot dot com every day. All sorts of great news uh, articles, uh, aggregation of rumors, and and fil filtering those through our our own stuff, opin opinions, reviews, uh, inner interviews comics Mar marvel star star wars drama hor horror we we cover it all we cover it all the podcasts are available wherever wherever you get your podcasts from great shows dealing with anime marvel mo movies uh catch all stuff like uh breaking geek uh radio the podcast and and all of that goes up on our on our youtube channel hit that red red subscribe button everything now now is in vi video everything so it's it's great uh um you can watch the guys over at breaking geek you can watch brian and i talk talk about spy fa family you can wa watch me reacting to uh to uh trailers and and things like that on on youtube so yeah please do subscribe help us help us grow share us with some some friends and and family uh if that's the thing people still do do these days i'm such a bad internet user i really am cam cam <laughs> if you guys want to try to talk talk to me on so social media i i am on on twitter at that at that kyle malone uh cam you want to mention about writers and where people can find, yeah, find you uh, if you're looking to if you'd like to get into writing about you know your favorite subjects you the 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 biggest news that's coming out um, and you'd like to have a platform to do that on um wrong, come man. in and 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 give us a shout you can either reach me at lrm underscore cam you can check the website lrmonline.com and every week we post a um a contributor's kind of wanted article so just watch out for that it'll be there within the last seven days always um, and all the details are on that and how to get in contact with shoki who's the main one that you would be you kind of dealing with and in, in, in terms of getting set up but you know if you're interested absolutely you know and it's it is predominantly you know people that want to write and learn how to write, write articles that we're, we're looking for so if that's your thing like it was my thing um then mine too shout. That's how I, I got started here many, yep. many years ago. Go now. Oh, my God. It's been four four years this, this August. 
crazy anyways guys that that's the show we'll be here next week with more more star wars stuff and then of course at the end of may we'll be ge- gearing over to cantina reviews to to review uh obi-wan kenobi and we'll wrap news in as necessary during during those episodes may the may the force be uh may the force be with you